Hello, everybody. I'm Starly, by the way. I am here to do a tutorial on how I built my electric spinning wheel. You're here on the serious side of me. Um, I know the other um, spinning wheels, the electric ones, are beautiful. And they work beautiful, but some of us can't afford the high price ones. And so I made my own. So that tells a little bit about me. <laughs> and here is how I can explain it to you with my own words and how to make your own. Let's see if I can get lined up here. I'm using my laptop here to try to videotape this. This is my spinning wheel. As you can see, it's big. I like it big this way because this way, when I'm plying my... Um, my fiber into yarn, I can sit this right here and ply them both in to my um, orifice over here. But today we're going to explain how to make a spinning wheel, electric one. And what I did is I took an old sewing machine motor. You want one that has the foot pedal with it, that is attached, as you can see here. This one goes with this. And it unplugs with electricity and for the um, foot pedal. It's a sew machine one. And sew machine motors are nice and quiet. That's the reason I like it. Okay, and what I did is I put two nuts in to help keep the bolt lined up. To put the two bolts in to keep my belt lined up with the wheel. Now you're going to find this to be different with other other um, flies and bobbins that you use. You may use a smaller one and so you want your belt to line up and your motor to line up with this part here so when it turns it's all lined up. Now some of you will get, I don't know if you can see this, but you want it to line up with your your belt. See when you're working on it. So each each flyer, each bobbin is going to be different, so you'll have to kind of watch that. Um, this bobbin came with its own port right here, so all we did was add a piece of backing next to it so we could get our motor lined up. Turn it again here. Hopefully, this just will show up. I don't know if it will. So it would line up with the belt where it needed to go. Now with the stand, figure out what size you want made. Um, my husband cut this plywood for me to make the stand for it. This is the back here. And then he put the blocks in so you can screw the back onto the blocks and underneath to make it good and strong. Um, the reason these are here is to help guide your belt up to your fly because without those there I found that my um, belt would fly off my uh, wheel up here and so by putting those there it kind of gives them a guide to stay into and what we did was use a bolt a couple of washers and then we put some let's see what are they called nylon spacers is what they're called they're like a little nylon thing but they're like a little pipe that's the only way I can describe it uh, that he put on there and with a washer in front washer in back and then bolted in and by doing that it's so simple there's nothing to it and then you can oh and then when you're changing to go one direction and then you want to go the other you have your belt on one way or you take it off, like I showed you before, and flip the belt over. You would find just a tiny twist in here, but not much. And that will cause it to go another way. And then when you want it to go the other way, you just flip your motor over. Now, something important with your motor, every motor is different. But you'll want your motor upright, where it spins from the belt over. And you want a space underneath, so the air can go underneath. There's quite a bit of space under there as you can see. That's just a piece of paper. 
so the air can get under the motor so your motor doesn't burn up because if you're like me I like to spin more than 10 to 15 minutes you know so that'll work and if you just do these simple little steps you can have electric mo electric um, spinning wheel and as you can see I have spun some stuff on there been playing around with just some plain um, non I was spinning some um, fibers that I didn't even put through the carter just to see how it would work and you can get pretty thin on here if you work at it now if you go too thin it does break on this kiwi um, what's it called the kiwi I don't know kiwi something fly but um, I like it I'm even thinking of making a small one to put a smaller bobbin and fly on it so I can have a smaller one and there's even smaller flies out there for doing lace because that's what I love to do is lace and sock yarn so I may go even with a smaller unit to have electric one as well along with my other spinning wheels is, that I enjoy and have fun with so I hope this helps describe a little bit in how to build your own um, I'm not very good at doing videos. I'm always nervous around them, so please forgive me. But I hope this gives you enough information to um, make your own. And you can make it any size you want. I just happen to make this one to fit a TV tray because it works better for me. Because I like sitting in a, a little bit higher chair and sitting up straight. But um, have fun with it. And if you can't make it, there's got to be someone out there that can help you. All you're doing is setting your motor in there to sit upright and have your belt go over to where you need it to on your fly or your bobbin, whichever way that your, um, your unit runs. They're all different, so you'll, that's all you really have to kind of watch is line things up and have a motor that you can turn on and off, which helps. I can see this is an um, older motor. I broke the, uh, the on and off switch, but it still works. But um, I like it. It's fun. It's enjoyable. And I hope this helps you to get yourself electric spinning wheel. <laughs> and the nice thing about this, you can go any speed you want. Sometimes I need to go slow because there's stuff in it. And then when I really get going, I can get my twist in it. And if I'm doing really good on a good day, I can get this baby flying. So have fun. It takes practice, just like a spinning wheel takes practice on how to use it. So have fun. I hope this helps. Bye for now.